Over the past few years, I have modded dozens of keyboards, ranging in cost from $30 to well over $500. And in this video, I'm going to explain why modding mechanical keyboards is more important than it seems, why modding keyboards is my favorite hobby, and how I think that you should get into the hobby. Let's start with why. Many times when I talk about my YouTube channel, the first thing I get asked is, why? A few years ago, I realized that in the white collar world, during this age of digital tech and social media, your net worth is directly tied to your ability to process and provide digital content. And the faster and more efficient you are at processing and providing that new information, the more value you can provide in everything that you do. This isn't new information. Obviously, if you quit an engineering or physician's position to pursue digital media full time, the value of being able to express yourself is apparent. So if you spend five minutes typing up a report instead of taking 10 minutes, you've literally just doubled your productivity. The average person can only type around 40 words per minute during a minute long test. But I would argue that if you are twice as fast at typing, then you would most likely be twice as fast as editing or curating the content that you make. But there is more to it than just being able to type fast. Making concise content, content that conveys information effectively in a shorter format is just as important as creating a volume of content. This is where repetition helps, as practice makes perfect. The more you type, the more you'll be able to identify efficient methods to convey the same information. Your sentence structure will change. Every Everybody, from politicians and journalists to writers, students, and construction workers, they consume a ton of content each day. And the importance of consuming more concise information increases as there's more information out on the web. Think about how many articles you consume each day compared to how many you create. Each video you post and article you read was created by somebody else. And indirectly or directly, somebody is profiting off of the information made by that person. By making typing more enjoyable and efficient, the longer you'll be able to type, become more efficient, and ultimately your worth digitally will skyrocket. Some people indirectly profit on information by doing something like management. But ultimately, what you provide for others is transferred via some form of media, like a contract. Even as a middleman of information, how you can transfer that information more efficiently becomes more important. If you produce a lot of interactions, whether that's in the form of posting social media or creating videos, your perceived social worth will probably be higher than if you hadn't. By becoming an effective communicator, self-expression can allow for a healthy self-image and help others by providing an open dialogue. The key is typing more. I feel that modding computer keyboards not only helps me to be to have a positive foundation for my expression and productivity, but also allows for artistic expression, like in the form of these artisan keycaps. Modding keyboards is my favorite hobby. I have other hobbies that are more exhilarating or creative, like precision shooting, writing, or cars, but ultimately what it comes down to is that building custom keyboards is my favorite hobby to share with others because it has affected me so positively by helping me to become more productive and express myself. I hope that it might lead others to be more productive, have more self-worth and self-expression. If you start getting into this hobby, you'll notice that it's filled with two different types of people. People who are fun and helpful, and then there are elitists. Some of these elitists hate any layout above 60%. Some of them will only use GM key keycaps. Uh, and some of them will only care about the rarity of a specific group buy or a specific you know, layout. When in fact, none of that really matters. It's all about your preference. Another aspect is that many people try to be gatekeepers to the hobby, as if there's some sacred way to posting a keyboard to Reddit or there was one person that said my handmade resin keycaps weren't custom enough. Stuff like this can readily be seen on certain subreddits and websites, and I'm not really going to get into that right now. But they act as if you're not in the know and you're an outcast, which I completely disagree with on a fundamental and ethical level. I would really like to see this hobby become more of an art of expression, 
for everybody instead of just a nerdy hobby that some people practice because they can't seem to lube something else in their life. All jokes aside, if you are a part of the Met Keyboard community, have an open mind to help others to understand why something is important to you. Don't artificially create boundaries because they make you feel important. I find that the humility in explaining these things is the best way to open gates for others to join something that I believe in. Something as simple as explaining the most insignificant of details can open eyes and change people's lives. It did for me. The following instructions and mods might seem unimportant as a whole, but these methods allow for typing to become a lot more precise, uniform, and constructive. It allows the user to not have to think about which key he pressed or what his next movement should be. First and foremost, use proper technique, and I mean use all your fingers. This isn't just for efficiency and speed, but it's also because when you use less fingers, you have to contort your hands to compensate. Many keyboard enthusiasts use less fingers because they feel that a finger is not as strong or they just simply never learned. Of course, some people can type faster than you can with just three fingers, but I would argue that not only could they type faster with more fingers, but they could type much longer. I did a video where I typed 10,000 words without stopping. It took me almost three hours. And I know for a fact that they would end up with medical issues if they tried to do the same thing. I do understand that the vast majority of use on a keyboard is in bursts, like a simple sentence. So the straight line speed does ultimately affect your ability the most. But in times like note taking or dictating or you know transcribing a book, the straight line speed doesn't matter as much as the endurance. This is why it's important to use correct posture, using all your fingers and raising your wrists so that you don't get RSI. It'll allow you to get a ton more information out in the long run. Once you've mastered using the correct fingering, then the next thing would be to try and use certain shortcuts that reduce your movements, like hitting the numbers in the number row instead of on the number path or hitting the delete key instead of the right arrow and then the backspace, or using the control with the backspace to delete an entire previous word, or the home and end keys. Although a number pad is useful for things like Excel, when you have to alternate between using numbers and letters, it is far more efficient to not have to move your entire arm to hit a key. Next, I would suggest never looking at your hands. Although there are times like with symbols that I still struggle. Not having to pick and peck a key you are already hovering over will only help you in the long run. Over time, it just becomes muscle memory, even for the hard ones. If there's a key that's hard for you to press, like the carrot, the up arrow looking thing, then just use it in some passwords for a while until it becomes easy. Now for some useful mods you can do to your keyboard. If you already have a mechanical keyboard, my suggestion would be just to modify it in the following ways. It makes typing a lot more easy and enjoyable. If anything, that'll allow you to learn a little bit before you actually get into the hobby. If you don't like your current keyboard, think about why you don't like it and what would make you enjoy typing on it more. But don't just throw it out, please. Donate it if you can. In my experience, the most important modification you can do to a modern keyboard is the stabilizers. There is nothing more distracting than a rattle from a bad, unbalanced, or unlubed stabilizer. It can change a keyboard from feeling clunky and cheap to crisp and sturdy. Just with the simple mods like I did in my Corsair K70 video where I fixed a broken stabilizer and top lubed the switches, I became really happy with typing on that board again and it only cost me $12. I'm still using that today, three and a half years later. The second most important mod for a keyboard is how it feels. Keyboards deemed ancient tech by today's standard, like the IBM and Apple keyboards of the day, had much sturdier switches and felt more impactful, while the keyboards today emphasize more on functionality. Today, most enthusiast level keyboards are hot swappable, 
and changing the switches can provide you with a feeling that you would much rather prefer. But if you don't have a hot swappable keyboard, then just looping the switches through the top looping method can provide you with a similar feeling for a fraction of the effort and cost. Switches come in a variety of shapes that change how much and where the back pressure is felt, as well as side to side stability. Linear switches have straight force curves, and tactile and clicky switches have nonlinear force curves that can help to indicate in different ways when a key is pressed. How a keyboard sounds is also important. Many keyboards have issues like case ping, switch ping, or hollowness that reduce feedback. By lubing the switches, dampening the case, or by changing the case material, a different and more crisp sound can be achieved. Lastly, macros can be added to increase efficiency. By being able to change what each key press does, you can increase the usability of your keyboard. Many keyboards today either natively support macros or allow for other programs like VIA to reprogram the keyboard to perform custom commands. There are even little USB dongles that can convert your keyboard into one that can do macros and use VIA. There are specific mods like tape modding the PCB that acts as a low pass filter that will make your keyboard sound a little bit more poppy. And there's also the holy mod that reduces all rattle in the stabilizers. This leads to the final aspect of modding, the aesthetics. By making an environment unique to you and aesthetically pleasing, being in that area of your home creates positive thoughts and makes you naturally a more positive and encouraging person. If you are buying a new keyboard, some topics that I would consider in this order is the build quality. I generally like to see non-plastic cases or at least threaded inserts. The next thing I'd look at is the ergonomics. Uh, and the layout. My favorite layout is a TKL, or that's also called 80%. Generally, boards that are not tilted as much are better for you and keep you healthy. Let me know what you're currently typing on, what else you're going to do to it, and maybe what sh I should do next. If there is something I missed, please comment down below, check out my other content, and as always, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. I have other five... Oh my god. I have other fobbies. <laughs>